We recently sailed on Ovation of the Seas. It was our first time on a quantum class ship, and even though we'd sailed 14 previous times on Royal, we still had some surprises. Mm. So stay tuned to see what they were. So this is not the biggest ship in the Royal Fleet, but it is somewhat large. So let JJ give you the stats. I love stats. It's a quantum class ship. It was built in 2016. 2016. 2016. But it, it had a dry dock, right? It had a dry dock in 2021. Got a little facelift. Bur refurb. Re refurb. She weighs in at 169,000 tons. 388 million pounds. Wow, okay. She's got 16 decks. 2,098 staterooms, capacity is 4,825 passengers, 1,300 crew. Nine decks have passenger cabins on this ship. We're going to go through several categories for you and give you our opinions. We're going to go through like the ship layout and food and service and entertainment and let you know what we thought about this Quantum Class lady. So I will say for the size of this ship, and we've been on several Oasis class ships, but I never really felt crowded. I did not either. Did you? I mean, there were, this was a full capacity ship, no empty cabins. And there was one time that we got out of the elevator. It was on day two, in fact. We got out of the elevator to get in line for the wind jammer. Oh which my is goodness. The buffet. Oh my and goodness. the line was all the way back down the hallway. We learned why though. Hmm. They rope off the entry to the windjammer. Right. So. They're trying to channel me in to wash my hands. You'll go wash your washy, hands. Washy, washy. They have like four or five sinks, right? And they want people to wash their hands and then go. It's literally has like a wall where the sink area is. They're not going to force you to go wash your hands. You can pass the rope. We didn't know that to begin with, though. We thought literally the line, the windjammer was so full that there was no seating. Mandatory. And the line was all the way back. It wasn't. It was just because people were actually following the washy-washy line. And they actually did wash their hands. Right. Also, on the last sea day, hmm. it was the Esplanade. Get on a ship this size. It's not called a promenade. So if you're a Royal Caribbean usual cruiser, but you've never been on a quantum class, the proper word is Esplanade. I called it promenade most of the week, probably. Um, the Esplanade was a little busy on the last formal night. Mm, yeah. Everyone picture was like, taking and whatever. Yeah, you know, they were all dressed up, and so they were picture taking. But other than those two times the whole week, I never felt crowded anymore. Nope. nope. So the ship layout, we'll start on deck 15 for you because that's the top deck. On that deck... I can't even read my notes. We got our notes here for you so we can be thorough, right? I didn't miss anything. That was basically the activities deck, and we did Sail Away. Yes, we from did. From deck 15. You have the gym and the spa at the front of the ship, and then you have the North Star, which if you're not familiar, again, with a quantum class, the North Star is a... I'll demonstrate. Okay. Mm. This right here mm. is a mm. round mm. passenger mm. container. It goes over the water. For people to get right. I'm over the water. And then it comes off of an arm and it goes out over the water and all over the ship. So it's called the North Star. And that is also on deck 15. And then the C Plex is down from there. The C Plex is like their activities deck, right? It has uh, bumper cars, which we tried and were awesome. It also has the iFly entry in the middle right there by the C-Plex, which we also did. All of our vlogs will be linked below because we did vlogs every day on board and we did many of these activities. So if you're interested in seeing our experience on board, rather than just a review, you can check out the vlogs, which will be linked below. What is iFly? iFly is a simulated skydiving pod. You're in a tube. Yeah, it was really fun. I'll show you some footage here. It was really fun and I highly recommend that. And I highly recommend the bumper cars. Great fun, right? So that C-Plex area is also right there on deck 15. And then at the back end, just up the stairs onto deck 16 was the flow rider. So all that deck 15 and then onto 16 is a really good place for sail away. So that's the place. If you need a place for sail away, that's it. 
I thought it was really laid out well. Mm -hmm. Just the whole ship. Do you remember getting lost a whole lot? No. And we've gotten lost on ships. Yes, <laughs> Se we have. Several times, especially the Oasis class ships for Royal. Um, it's hard to remember until you get to like day four or five how everything is laid out. And I really thought that this ship was laid out well. By the time we get to day six, I've got it down. <laughs> right. And we do, mostly we do seven-nighters, right? Well, there you have it. Yeah. So deck 14 is where the pools are. Um, the windjammer is in the back, which is common on a Royal Caribbean ship. So that was usual for us to to kind of get around. Yep. Right? It was a good reminder. Outside and inside pools are in the middle. And then there's the Solarium Bistro and the Solarium. That was interesting, the outside and inside pools. Right. So you had an indoor pool and an outdoor pool. That are for everybody. In the center of the ship. Yeah, public, outdoor and indoor. And then the Solarium on the front end. For right, 18 and above. Yeah, they, they bumped up the age too, hadn't they? I read or heard that this ship was originally meant for, I think, the Asian market. And so I think they were contemplating different weather. And, of course, our sailing was to Alaska but ovation, you know, goes all over. Right. So it's really nice to have a, a public outdoor, public indoor pools for any age. And then the solarium, which is 18 and above. And the solarium bistro is a restaurant that's right next to the solarium. So we'll talk about food later on. Um, Somebody there, say food? Yeah. Mm. There are several different food venues on ovation, which we enjoyed and we'll tell you about too. So deck 14... Right is where we were. Decks 12 through 6 are mainly state rooms. State rooms. Yeah. Just cabins. And we'll tell you, we'll give you. where our, people live. They do. Yeah. Or at least five to seven nights. That's their home for seven, five to seven days. We'll give you our opinion on our cabin too. So the wind jammer, I really felt like there was enough seating. Yeah, we didn't feel. In the wind jammer. We, we didn't ever go in there where we couldn't find a seat. Right. So, great wind of views. Great, of course, depending on where you're sailing. Um, outside seating was amazing. So, even if you're on a chilly or a colder sailing, make sure you go out there. Uh, and, of course, we left from Seattle. And it was really nice on the that first day. The weather was comfortable. Yeah, it was really nice. So, you may, you may actually be on a warmer climate sailing when you're on Ovation. And if so, be sure you get out to the outside seating first, because it'll fill up fast. Or another, another quantum class ship. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. We quantum, did wake up the next morning. It was it was chilly. It was cold. Yeah. So, depending on what your sailing is, uh, will depend on probably where you sit in the wind jammer. Sure. If you want to take advantage of that outdoor seating, but the views, if you're just looking for good views, are amazing out the back there of the wind jammer. So we're skipping down to deck five. And deck five was kind of mixed up. Again, this is a quantum class, our first time on it, not like an Oasis class. So decks four and five are kind of a combined esplanade. Well, they have shops and yeah. the casino. and What you're used to seeing on a promenade on a ship, a Royal Caribbean ship that has a deck promenade, is just that one deck five and all right. the shops, most of the shops are on there. Right, so here on this quantum class, it was decks five and four. Of course, the theater has the main floor and then it has a balcony as well. And then you have your specialty restaurants, Chops, Wonderland, and Izumi are all towards the front. However, Jamie's was then in the middle. In the middle. In the middle of the ship. Right. So also up front by these specialty restaurants, you had the photo gallery kind of just stuck up there where you'd think there'd be another restaurant <laughs> right next to Izumi and Wonderland, but then you have the photo gallery. That was kind of different. Kind of odd, yeah. That's why I just used the term like mixed up. Deck five, it seemed just kind of mixed up. Um, you have shore excursions in the middle as well. And then all of a sudden, you have two more retail shops up on five, even though all the other shops are down on four. So you have an Omega and a Cartier store on five across from Jamie's. So, again. And then the Cafe 270 and the Theater 270 are at the very back of the ship. And my goodness, what'd you think about 270? It was amazing. 
You want the best views That's it. indoors That's it. on this ship? It's in the Theater 270. The Quantum class does it right back there. Wow. It is just beautiful. In fact, they gave a number, some million dollar amount. Oh. That they said, he said, this is our, you know, whatever, 20 million. I don't remember what the number was. $20 million theater. And that's how much it costs. It is beautiful and amazing. So one, anytime you have a chance to go to shows in yeah. the 270 theater. I'm not sure that's an accurate number. I think it was more than that. Yeah. It's yeah. probably more. Um, go to the shows, but also during the day, during sea days, if you just want a relaxing, beautiful view, 270 Theater at the back of the ship. Just go also, back there and read a book. Yeah. Also back there was the Cafe 270. 270. Just which, outside. We'll talk about food in a second, but it's also right back there at the back of the ship as well. Before you enter. Yeah, before you enter the it's theater. On the right side. You want to... So deck four, the Esplanade. Also called Promenade, and I called it Promenade most of the week. Um, that's the fun deck, I think. Four and five are the fun decks. It has all the shops and the snacks on it. Did um, somebody say food? Yeah, food. Pat La Patisserie, which is a four-fee-based snack shop. That's where you Kind of like your... a specialty snack. Yeah, that's where you get your specialty coffees, like, you know, your Starbucks coffees, and your Ben & Jerry's ice cream, and then all of these wonderful snacks mm. of which we partook mm. is that a word partook it is now yes um and they were really good but they are extra fee unless you have a dining package or a drink package or diamond vouchers if you're real caribbean diamond level they would work there for like the coffees and the drinks um la patisserie's there cafe promenade if you're familiar with the royal caribbean cafe promenade's there sorrento's pizza so all the little snack shops a plethora as well as Good word. Ooh. As well as a pub. It's yeah. right there too by Sorrento's. Um, and then you walk on down for, and this is what's odd about deck four, is that you think it's gonna be like a promenade and it's gonna be a straight shot and it doesn't. It like cuts off and you wind around. So you're going forward. <laughs> right, but you have to go like to your to left. To the left. Right, and there's more shops. To the left or to the right? Down, to the left. Okay. Sorrento's is to your right, the pub, and then you go off to your left. Correct. Go past the pub and around, and again, there's more shops down there. And then there's the music hall. And the music hall is, we thought it was a great venue. We saw a live band. What yeah. were they called? The Dukes? The Dukes. The Dukes. From England. Amazing live band in there. And we also did my favorite activity, Silent Disco. And if you don't want to participate in like the Silent Disco, you can go and sit and laugh at everybody else like JJ did. But the music hall is a really nice video. It was very interesting. And then the theater is also, the main floor of the theater is on four. Correct. So that's a really busy deck. So... Deck three, then. Mm -hmm. Deck three is the first level of the music hall, okay? Like we said, the casino is also in deck three, in the middle of the ship. And I then forgot to spend my money at the casino. We didn't, did we not on a vacation? No. Mm, yeah, we usually, big rollers that we are. Or six are. bucks Royal Caribbean, and I Free limit play. myself to $10 and done. And we're done. Out the door. Right. We did not go to the casino. It is... There is a smoking section, so it's not smoke-free on Ovation. So the casino is in the middle of deck three, and then the other two main dining rooms are at the back. Um, and honestly, we went to this deck one time to get into the music hall for the live band on the first night. I mean, we that went was to the, the only time we were there. Yeah, we went to the MDR one night. One night. And we'll talk about food, right? <coughs> but... um. That's the only reason we went to this deck. If you're going to the main dining room all the time, obviously you'll go to that end of the ship for your dining options. But other than that, you know, deck three, not too active. Um, it was nice that most everything I thought was on decks four and five. All the activity, again, all the, all the specialty dining is on four and five. You know, your photo gallery, your theater, music hall, all that kind of stuff. So what was your opinion of the cabin, Mr. JJ? Cabin was nice. Yeah. The cabin, cabin was very nice. We lost our cabin tour, the video. actual video. Did right. Accidentally. Yeah, deleted it. So Operator error. It's gone. Sorry. But the we had a balcony 
an ocean view balcony, the smaller size of balcony. You can get a larger balcony or smaller. We had just the regular ocean view balcony. And it was the same size as any balcony we've had on any other ship. Seemed to be. Right. It had good storage. Don't forget your above the bed, above the bed storage on Royal Caribbean ships. They take great advantage of that. You've got two flip up shelves above your bed that you can take advantage of. The closet was the normal size. It's like a flip up cabinet. Right. But it's it's a long, there's two of them. Yeah. The king size bed split in half and then each half's got a cabinet and it opens from bottom to top. And there's lots of storage of both. It was very, it was very helpful. If you have found this video valuable or helpful in any way, be sure to like and subscribe for more cruise and travel content. We really appreciate it. So moving to one of your favorite subjects. Would it be food? It's food. All oh, right. Food. So we're going to give you our ratings of the different places that we were actually able to eat. Royal Caribbean is not a sponsor of this section of the video. <laughs> All right. And even the scores that are not too good. Right. What are you going to do? We give it to you straight here at All Things Wagner. So, okay. Let's start with the buffet, which is the wind jammer. The buffet. Right. My score for the buffet on Ovation of the Sea on a one to 10 scale was a six. What was your? Seven. Your, okay. So we have unfortunately experienced Royal Caribbean food, specifically in the buffet, really hasn't come back up. Not, not up to par yet. Since the restart. That's just and our we opinions. And we remember what the food was like yeah. pre-COVID, so. Yeah. So we haven't they're, been They're thrilled. getting there, it's just slow. Yeah. 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 So, Ovation was about a six for the buffet, and you said seven. Seven. Okay. Main dining room, which, full transparency, we ate at twice. Once for dinner and once for breakfast. We were just really busy, like, up and around doing our vlogs and working. Plus, our itinerary, we were in ports for much longer than we usually are. Which we enjoyed. Right, because we were on an Alaskan itinerary. So, we often ate dinner in port right, which we don't often do usually on a Caribbean cruise, right. So MDR, however, food quality alone, not talking about service, we'll rate those later, food in the MDR to me was a 10. 10. Okay, so we were very happy with MDR. MDR was good. Yeah, Sorrento's pizza. Oh. My score for Sorrento's, you know, my notes say eight, but for cruise line pizza, it, quite frankly, it was perfect, so I'm going to change that to nine. I thought Sorrento's was a nine. I thought it was a nine. Okay. Sorrento's pizza was thin and crispy. The um, way you like it. Yeah. It was just, for cruise ship pizza, it was really good. Yeah? Yeah. And well, the sauce was tasty. Yeah, I mean, everything about it. The cheese was gooey. Everything about Sorrento's pizza was good. La Patisserie? My nine. score for La Patisserie is nine. Or, you know, maybe even a ten. Didn't we get a cupcake there? Yeah, Ooh. we had a couple of desserts from there. Mm. They were they were really good. Mm. They were you know moist and on point. So doghouse, which is in the Cplex, right? Isn't and that where I beat you at Cornell? That's a different that's a different activity, sir. I have to remind her occasionally. <laughs> so we'll talk about the Cplex, right? When we're talking about entertainment. Beanbag tossing. But in the Cplex, they have a hot dog stand called. The dog house. It's not a stand. It's an actual, you know, embedded little food restaurant. It's not a restaurant because you can't eat inside. But, and they do hot dogs, all different kinds of meat and worst and buns, right? Not worst. So I had a chicken sausage, and I rated dog house as an eight. Nine. The okay. brought worst was good. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Right. Cafe Promenade. I rated as a six. For food quality and the main reason is the crack cookies if you're not familiar oh, oh you need to explain that if you're not familiar with crack cookies on Royal Caribbean they are an oatmeal brown sugar what coconut. concoction coconut, coconut concoction of a cookie when they are on point and soft they're gooey and warm Seriously, it's like crack. Gooey and chewy. I want to call them crack cookies. They're really, really they good. They really don't have crack in them. <laughs> as far as we know. As far as we know. The first time we went to Cafe Promenade on the ovation, the first two times, I'm sorry, for cookies, they were like hard as rock. Like they had forgotten about them and left them in the oven. Like too. peanut brittle? 
Yeah, they were mm. really crispy instead of soft. Mm. And so gooey. that's why I give Cafe Promenade a six. Plus there are other snacks. And maybe I'm just comparing it to La Patisserie because it was right across the Esplanade from each other. And of course, La Patisserie, you have to pay, right? Cafe Promenade is included snacks. But uh, I, I give Cafe Promenade a six. What about you? About a five. Okay. Yeah, it just wasn't up to snuff, I'd say, this time. So there's another restaurant that's called Fish and Ships. Ships. Right. You get the right fish, fish and ships. Ships, as on you're on a ship, right? We did a little tour of that and showed you the menu on one of our vlogs, but we did not eat there. So, but we wanted to tell you about it because I think it's probably worth trying. I've heard some good reviews from Heard there. nothing but good reviews. Yeah. Somewhere we also did not eat, and we'll definitely tell you why, was the Cafe 270. It's, remember, at the back of the ship near the Theater 270. Right outside Theater 270. Right outside. It's the couple of times we went in there. One, the first time we went in there, it's just sandwiches. Yeah, and uh, what do they food. call them? What do they call the roll? The yeah, yeah, like the salad rolls. You know, if you if you take something and put it in like a burrito, a sandwich burrito. Yeah, almost. yeah, yeah, like a turkey burrito or something. And the time, the first time we went by there, I was just ready for something more substantive. So we ended up going to the Windjammer buffet because. As I looked, as I went in there and looked around, I was like, eh, not really in the mood for a sandwich. It's not snack time. Right. If you are in the mood for a sandwich, That's my a... friend who went a few months before us on the ovation, they loved 270 Cafe. They ate there a couple times. So if you're in the mood for a snack, that's the place right. to go. The second time we went up there, it was for dinner one evening, and they were closed. So I don't think they're generally open for dinner, and we ended up back at the buffet. Uh, so, if that's the kind of food you're looking for, Cafe 270 might work out for you. Specialty dining. Mm. Mm. We did the Chops Plus One. So, we did Jamie's, which is an Italian restaurant, if you're not familiar. And then we did Chops, which is the Royal Caribbean Steak House. Jamie's, I gave a 10. 10, definitely. In fact, if I could give 10 plus, I would give a 10 plus. Jamie's was... For both the food and the service. Yeah, and um, we'll do service here in a second, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, Jamie's food was amazing. And we put that on the vlog again. The vlogs will be linked below. But it was it was very good, Jamie's on ovation. Chops, the food, I gave it 10. 10. Yeah, the food at Chops was amazing. We'll talk about the service a little later at Chops and some things that happened. But we also have a full week of food on Ovation of the Sea video already out. I will link that below as well because that's all it is and that's really where you need to go to see the Jamie's and the Chops food because that's all it is. It's the MDR and it's literal videos of the buffets in the Windjammer like a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner buffet in the Windjammer so you can see what the food options are um, as well as our doghouse and our Sorrento's um, I didn't realize until I went to make the food video that we ate at Sorrento's quite a few times. Well, I don't know about you, but I go for the uh, scenery and the cruise and the relaxation. I don't care about the food. Sure. Yeah. He doesn't care about the food at all. Okay. That's not true. Entertainment. Mm. Okay. So one of the first things we wanted to talk about, we thought was really patriotic and nice to have because not every ship has this. They specifically had a veteran salute and which also included like an introduction and awards to like the pinnacle, the VIP groups, but just the veteran ceremony was really nice. Yeah, it, it was first class. And yeah. the reason it was is because they called, instead of just doing a tribute to veterans in general, they called each branch of the military and played uh, the music. Their theme song. Their, their theme song right. that represent the Marine Corps, the Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the everybody, the Marines. It was just amazing. And then they, and then they asked those people who uh, were veterans of that specific uh, branch of service to stand. Right. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and the captain was involved in that. Absolutely. The crew, the, all the officer staff yep. were involved in that. It was just, it was really nice. Heartwarming. Yeah. 
Uh, we just uh, got off another cruise a while ago, and they don't have they didn't have anything. They didn't even have like a veterans get together. If they did, we missed it. Yeah, most all the Royal Caribbean ships at and least I put a veterans get together on your cruise planner schedule. You know, on your agenda for the day. But they went over and above. Ovation yeah. did to have an actual ceremony. Yeah, right. We thought it was really nice. So the shows that we saw were Beautiful Dream that was in the theater. And the dancing and singing were amazing, which is what we usually find with Royal. Right. The talent, the dancing and singing on Royal is generally a 9 out of 10, like seriously at least. And Beautiful Dream was true for that, but it's kind of a, kind of an ethereal kind of script. It didn't even really have a script. It's kind of weird. Yeah. So if you just like wonderful dancing and singing... Make sure you see Beautiful Dream. Right. Right. The storyline. Right. Uh, Not so much. Um, we also saw Spectra Cabaret in the 270. That was the only show, by the way, that we had to reserve on the app before the cruise. For a ship this size, you don't reserve any of the shows except for Spe Spectra, Spectre Cabaret, because it's in that small venue. Right. The theater 270, the 270 is smaller, so they want you to make reservations, and you can do that before. And it's free. They're free reservations. You don't pay for the show. Right. But you do need to make reservations, so make sure that you look at that. That was kind of unique. It was. It was an electronic, computer-themed show. Again, dancing yeah. and singing. Kind of unique. Dancing and singing, 9 out of 10. Very good. Um, but it was like an electronic electro electronic computer robot kind of theme show <laughs> so if you're With not all these moving parts yes screens that came that together it was yeah so if you're not into very, that very technological yeah then you might not like it um but it was a nice i like the 270 theater. i thought it was i thought it was a fascinating the smaller production venue. yeah the, it, i mean very in, entertaining yeah you know um, the show that we didn't get to see, that the large show in the theater, was Live, Love, Legs. We reserved it when we got on board, which is what you do with the other shows that you can't reserve on the app. Right when you get on board, Embarkation Day, go to the theater and reserve all your shows for the week. right? Or just get on the app and reserve them there. Um, so we had some rough seas on the sailing. So JJ was seasick. Mm. The night that we scheduled Live Love Legs, and so we did not get to see it. Sorry, didn't make it. Right. So, sorry, we can't give you a review, but the it's seas, available. The seas were rough. Yeah. Yeah. But it is available, so make sure you look for it. Okay, moving on for entertainment, the Cplex area. Now you can talk about your championship game. <laughs> the beanbag toss, also known as cornhole. Don't know where they got that name. Except you throw the bag of corn in the hole. In the hole, right. Uh, um, it was fun. That was a very fun area. Who Again, won that? Uh, I just said you can talk about your championship game. Oh, wait. It was me, wasn't it? It was you. Barely, oh. though. Barely. You can see the game on our vlogs. He barely inched by. I was ahead for most of the game. Yeah, you know what they call the person sounds in second like, place. Sounds like football season. Yeah. Loser. First place loser. It's a fun area. Bumper cars we also did, and that was really fun. I could have kept going. We went you on went a... You went multiple times. I did go multiple times. We went on the morning of a sea day, I think, and I expected it to be backed up, lined all the way around the Cplex area, and it was not. How many children did you have to snatch out of that car to get in, back in <laughs> it? It was a lot of kids. <laughs> and you can get out and... When you finish your turn and just go all the way around and get right back in line. And that's what most of the kids were doing. And that's what I did several times. So bumper cars are fun. Try them. And the arcade is also right off the C-Plex in this area. We did not go into the arcade, but just know it's there for you and or your kids. And then the music hall, we've already talked about. We really like the live band. The, the Dukes yeah, were good. It was really good. And um, the silent disco. To... We need to find a link to their 
Yeah, yeah. they're paid. Yeah. And who knows, on your sailing, they may not be there, but they may just not. know. You might like the music. Just know that inside the music hall is going to be a live band of some sort if the Dukes are no longer on ovation. When you sail on her, make sure you find out who is in the music hall because that was a good area. Service. Mm -hmm. Service on board. Okay. All right. Embarkation. Drum roll. What was your score for embarkation? 10. 10. Complete 10. Again, this was Seattle Port. However, you know, the cruise line employees help with embarkation. So I think some of those people are port employees and work for like the city, right? This would be the city of Seattle. Um, but some of them are also Royal Caribbean employees. It was very smooth. We walked right through. We didn't have to wait. Very we well organized. Showed up at our and, and you know, time. Part of, part of the, the key to part of that is people showing up at their designated embarkation time. Right. You know, to, to regulate the out. traffic. Yeah, regulate the flow. Yep. Yeah, it was, embarkation was 10. Cabin attendant? 10. 10. We rarely In have. And out of the park. We rarely have anything below 10 on our cruises. Once, I think, in One time. 15. Right. One time. And that was post-COVID. Yeah. Specialty restaurants. Let's start with Chops. This is service rating again. Yeah, we already service. did the food. So both Jamie's and Chops were a 10 when it came to food quality. Need to make sure we tell you that up front. Yes. The so service, service for me? Service and Chops. Seven. Yeah, me too. Tell I had, why. A, I had originally put like an eight. This is what happened, okay? So, you know, you make your reservation for your dining on the app when right. you get on board, right. okay? We went in maybe... Five minutes? Five minutes early. Before, right? They immediately sat us. Immediately. Okay. No problem. It was at least 12, maybe closer 12, to 12. 12 to 15 minutes. minutes. We sat there without a single wait person. Acknowledging or... Even, a pro, even giving us water. Water or... Yeah. It was, it was around 12 minutes that we just sat there without any attention at all they actually came and explained it to you yeah so they explained this is what happened that people several people showed up before their seating time and they don't want to leave them in the foyer area they want to immediately seat them you can walk into the restaurant and see that there's tables everywhere so the passenger who walked in early would wonder why aren't you seating me what's the problem i see tables all over the place well you're early. So what happened is that they experienced the domino effect mm -hmm. with their plan, their process for wait staff and how many tables each wait staff has. I'm sorry, Miss Wagner, you need to wait. You're still 30 minutes early. So that's what they really need to do. They need to just tell, say, thank you, Mr. Miss Wagner. It's good to see you. I see your reservation here. We'll seat you closer to your appointment time, your right. reservation time. They need to say that, but they're not going to. Newsflash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why they make reservations, so they can regulate the traffic Absolutely. in and out of the restaurant, so they can so, provide excellent service. Our cruise pro tip is just show up on time so right. you don't affect everyone else's right. reservation time. Right. But that's why the service, again, it really wasn't their fault. We found out um, after they got to us and thereafter the service was regular. So it was normal what we're used to in chops. Correct. Right. Um, let's see. And Jamie's was a 10 plus service. Oh, yeah. Our, our oh, white person yeah. there was amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. MDR, my rating for the MDR service was eight. That's kind of more the kitchen than the servers. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. JJ had a problem with his steak the one night we were there. He ordered the. FYI, the filet. in the main dining room in Royal, on Royal Caribbean ships, you have the option <clears throat> of paying extra and ordering the chops filet or lobster. Check the menu because I don't know how long that's going to go on. Well, they'll probably always let you pay extra. No, I'm saying I don't <laughs> know how long they'll let you buy that same steak in the MDR, especially at, you know, $18. So he ordered off the menu the chops in the main dining room and they brought it to him and it was overcooked it was overcooked right so he told them and they started all over which took a really long time 
And then really when, long time. In when fact, he got you, had, it, you had nearly finished your meal. When he got it, it was then undercooked, and he said, "Just put it back on the grill for a little bit," which they did because then it quickly came back out and was pretty close. Is close. Yeah, pretty close. Still not perfect, but pretty close. So I'd say you know eight for servers. Breakfast service was also about eight in the yeah. DR. Yeah. They were a little slow to check on us. After they got us our food, it was then like, where, where is everybody? If we needed something extra, it's kind of hard to get a hold of someone. Yeah, I think again, I think they may have been understaffed. Could have been. Other food venues on board, like we talked about, you know, the Cafe Promenade, Sorrento's, La Patisserie, Doghouse, um, 10. They were all good. Yeah, we never had any service issues. They were all good. On any of the other. Um, service at the actual Voom desk. And if you don't know, Voom is the Wi-Fi the service Wi-Fi. for Royal Caribbean. Um, what do they call that now? Starlink. Starlink. And the right. service was very good. The service at the Voom desk was very good. Right. That's a that's a tip. <clears throat> yeah. The reason we had to go to the Voom desk, <sighs> however, was because it kept kicking us off. So that was about a seven or Reconnect. eight. Reconnect. Reconnect. Seriously. Reconnect. If I put my phone down for like five, seven minutes and I wasn't in, um, bump you conti- off. continuously on bump you the off. internet, it would bump me off and I would have to re-log in. It's kind of a pain. So we went to the Voom desk to try and see if there was anything they could do. You know, they looked at all kinds of settings on our phone and they, they helped us. So the service at the Voom desk was very helpful, but the actual internet service on board. Yeah was not too good. That was probably like a seven or an eight. I think they were still trying to work out some bugs. Yeah. Guest services, the service at guest services was a 10. Yes. You agree? Yes. Yeah. They were very helpful, very good. Um, just, just a couple of times that we had to go to guest services. Which is a good thing. Yeah, and they were very helpful. And if you're trying to decide what gear to take on your next cruise, check out this video right here. Thanks for stopping by. Be blessed. Peace.